welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our new dye flower garden backdrop. So let's go ahead and check it out. This backdrop die is amazing. It cuts a backdrop that is five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches with all of these gorgeous greenery around. It also comes with extra little leaves and greenery, leaves that you can layer behind, and then flowers that you can add to this backdrop or not. And what I love about this backdrop is if you were to leave it plain green, it would just look like a lot of greenery. But you can also layer the flowers behind that little greenery and create more of a flower garden look. And I think it looks so gorgeous. You can even do a mix of them where you've layered flowers behind it, and then some of them you haven't layered the flowers. There's large flowers and small flowers so you can mix and match them together. And I like to add a little drop of glue and then just layer it right behind that piece right there and it just kind of fits perfectly on all of those flowers. Now, there are also these little solid leaves here which you can layer behind. So you can either leave those leaves kind of open, which is my favorite way to do them, or you can layer those little pieces behind to fill them in. And we'll be showing you both ways in this video and you can see how cool that looks and it's a fun way to bring in different shades of green or whatever color you're using for this backdrop. All of those little extra leaves and greenery pieces and stems can be added to kind of make your backdrop more full or you can use them separately too. I really like putting them in our watering can dye or in the new mason jar dye. I think they look so sweet like that. So those are adorable little flowers there and I love that it kind of gives you more options so that you could fill it in more or keep it as it is. So let's go ahead and start creating with this dye. So I've gone ahead and die cut this from some spiffy speckles paper, which is really beautiful because it has all those little speckly textures on it. And I think it looks amazing just like this. But I wanted to add a little bit more detail to it. And this is so easy to do with these little finger brushes or finger daubers and some ink. So I'm taking out some celery stick ink. I'm just gonna add some to the finger dauber, tap off any of the excess, and then I'm just gonna kind of go into the middle of these leaves and just blend on that ink. And you'll see how beautiful this looks. And I love that this is such a simple technique that looks absolutely gorgeous. So you'll see I'm starting with the ink kind of light and then just blending it out to kind of see what it's going to look like. I keep kind of adding more. I like to build it up that way. That way I really know exactly what it's going to look like versus starting with a really dark green ink. So you can see I'm just building it up on all of those leaves and I'm leaving the edges of the leaves nice and light so that you get that great gradient look. By starting with a piece of pattern paper or a piece of colored cardstock, it makes inflending like this really, really easy and absolutely stunning. It's just wow. It looks like we ink blended the whole thing and you can see just how beautiful this is looking. So I wanted to use this same idea for all my little flowers. So here I've got the Watercolor Wishes Rainbow Pack and what I love about these is the papers have these like four different shades of color. So you can die cut the flower out of all of these different sections and get different colors or even kind of line them up with the edge. You have a darker color on one part and a lighter color on the other. And so I went ahead and went through the purples, the yellows, the pinks to get all of the colors that we need for flowers for this card. One of the things that I love about the flower die is it cuts three at a time. So I cut three of the bigger flower and three of the smaller flower. I'm gonna go ahead and ink these up. And I actually only need some of these flowers, but my son really needed flowers for his project. So I went ahead and inked up some flowers for him too. So here you can see I have some ballet slippers ink and I'm just inking it on the very bottom of the flowers with those little finger brushes again. So I think this is a really fun way to just add some color that just takes a second. We'll use some fresh lavender on the purple and we'll just add a little bit of dark towards the bottom and I just think this is looking gorgeous and I just love using these little brushes they're just so much fun I just think they're awesome and then we'll repeat the same thing on the orange and the yellow on the orange I'm using some peach fuzz ink and that's going to give us that gorgeous gradient and on the yellow I'm going to use some lemonade ink and I love how these are looking now it's time to add these cute flowers into our flower garden backdrop. So I'm gonna bring back the piece that we inked up earlier and I'm gonna add the flowers on here. And my favorite way to do that is to add a little drop of glue with the glue tube at the very bottom. And then I just take the backdrop and I lay it right over top of the flower to make sure that it kind of glues. And I kind of move the flower until it's in perfect place. And then I can just hold it in place with my finger to make sure that it glues down. And so we're gonna repeat that all the way around our flower garden with this gorgeous, gorgeous color palette. 
One of the things that I really love about this flower garden backdrop die is that it's really beautiful as we're using it now with kind of the flowers coming up, but you can flip it upside down and get a really cool look like that, like all the flowers are hanging down. We're also going to show it how you can use it in a landscape style as well. You can also trim back some of the leaves, which we'll do in a little bit too. And while this is a gorgeous garden, it also makes for other great scenes. It can even be an ocean scene, which Shari is going to show you in just a little bit. Now here you can see I have another little stem. I'm going to add an extra little flower into this card. And so we're just going to ink up that stem like we did before. And then we can layer one of the flowers behind it. And we'll be adding that into our backdrop later. And right now I am recreating a card by Tammy. So thank you so much, Tammy. Next up, we need a sky for this gorgeous scene. And so I'm going to go to the Rainbow Ever After papers. And there's, of course, that gorgeous gradient. And I'm going to use the kind of blue to pink to purple shade. I'm kind of just seeing what shade's going to be the best of that whole paper. And then we'll trim down a piece to layer behind. We're also going to be creating some grass because we're going to add some adorable kangaroos to this card. So here is some watercolor wishes paper, and I'm just going to go ahead and die cut that with our grassy border die. I'm just laying it right next to my backdrop, kind of seeing how tall I want my grass to be. Then I can hold it in place with some low tack tape and run it through the die cut machine and we'll have this great grass. Then I'm just going to take some tape runner and layer that right onto that gorgeous gradient sky. We've designed this backdrop and most of Lawn Fawn's backdrops to work with the stitched rectangle frames. This is the largest stitched rectangle frame and we've gone ahead and die cut that out of some white cardstock. And what I love about using this frame over top of this border is that you can get two colors. So now we'll have the color of the frame and the color of the leaves. I also think it looks really, really gorgeous just leaving the whole thing green. It just depends on what design you're looking for for your card. So I just went ahead and added that frame on top and then I'm going to flip it over and add some foam strips all of the way around to give this a nice pop. I love doing this with the flower garden backdrop because it gives it the kind of cool shadow box feel and I just love all the amazing dimension. So now you'll see as we layer that on there the gorgeous dimension and like the little shadow of the flowers I just think it's so pretty. For this card, we're taking out one of my favorite new sets, which is Kangarific, which has these adorable kangaroos in it. And you can see just how fun these are. We went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut these cute kangaroos. And the mama kangaroo has a die that cuts the little cut line there for her pouch. So I'm going to add some tape runner to the back of the mama kangaroo, and then some tape runner to the back of the baby. And what you can do then is tuck the baby into the pouch. And I think this is just the cutest thing. And I'm making a Mother's Day card here, so it's just adorable with the little baby in her pouch. I mean, look how sweet that is. We, once we have that on there, we can go ahead and add this adorable flower crown, which goes along with our gorgeous flower card and backdrop. And now we're just going to flip all of these cute kangaroos and butterflies, and the butterflies are in the set too. And we're just going to add some foam squares to the back of all of these to give them a nice pop so that they line up with the flowers. We've also brought in that extra little flower that we did before too. Now, one thing I wanted to do to kind of help support this flower frame is just add some foam squares behind some of the flowers. This is going to give it a nice pop and just make sure those flowers stay exactly where I want them to stay there on the card. Once we've popped up all of the flowers, I'm going to go ahead and add in that extra little flower that we created earlier. And it was a bit too long, which is no big deal. We can just trim off the branch there and then layer that right there into the garden. You can see how we've kind of filled in the garden some more, which looks really, really cool. Now we can peel up the liner paper on all of our cute kangaroos and start layering them into the scene. So we're going to put the mama in the middle and then there is this little like jumping baby and so we're going to add him right there and then he's going to be holding the little flower bouquet to go along with our flower theme again which I think is just so sweet and bringing it to the mama kangaroo and then we're going to go ahead and layer that other little baby who's looking up at mom which is just so cute and sweet. Now for this sentiment, we are going to be using Hoppy Mother's Day to go along with our hopping kangaroos. So here is some black licorice cardstock. We're going to take our sentiment and we'll just butt those right up against each other. I love how easy it is to mix and match all of the different sentiments in that set. We can pick it up with our block and then we're going to be prepping this with an anti-static powder tool. We'll stamp in some clear embossing ink, which is a nice sticky ink. Then we can sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder and then heat it up with a heat tool to have a nice bright white shiny sentiment. After that, we're just going to go ahead and put it in the paper trimmer and just trim right around it so that it's this nice rectangular shape. Then we can go ahead and bring that back to the card and layer that in. And we're going to add some foam squares to the back of this so that it has the same pop as all of our cute characters. And then we can go ahead and add the cute little butterflies around it too. Also, of course, with some foam squares to give it a nice pop.
Next thing we need is a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter, and we can layer this whole panel on top. And now this cute card is done. I love this flower garden backdrop. It makes the cutest frame for fun scenes like these cute kangaroos. And it's so much fun to just add a little bit of inking on them to give them a bunch of dimension. So now for our next card, of course, we're starting with our flower garden backdrop, and we're gonna be doing some trimming on this flower garden backdrop, and we're gonna use it in a landscape style instead of a portrait. So here you can see how you can take your scissors and just trim off any of the leaves that you might like. So you can really make this backdrop have the perfect garden for your card. So I'm just gonna trim off these ones here to the side because that's where I'm gonna be adding a greenhouse to later. And then here you can see how we're gonna have it kind of in a landscape position. Now for this one, we're starting with white cardstock and we're going to add all of our color with markers, which is another fun way to add color to this backdrop. You could do just a little bit of inking like we did on the other card. You could use pattern papers, you could use colored cardstock, or you can take out your markers. And I love using my markers. I find coloring so relaxing, so that's what we're going to do here. And so there you can see I'm just kind of taking a dark marker, a medium marker, and then a light marker and blending it out. And so it just looks really, really gorgeous. And what I like about these leaves is you really can't do it wrong. I'm just really scribbling right over them. I'm not trying to be super, super careful because that's what's gonna give it that really soft, almost watercolory feel. Now, right now, I am recreating a card by Grace that is so stunning, so thank you so much, Grace. And one of the things that I thought was so cool that she did was she brought in this like turquoisey tealish color to go along with the green color of the leaves, and I really liked the mix and match of these. I just think it looks so beautiful. I never would have thought to bring in this color, but it is just stunning, and now I wanna do it more when I do different kind of gardens and leafy things, because I just think it's so pretty. Now that our garden is done, we're gonna start working on the flowers. So I went ahead and die cut the large and small flowers out of some white cardstock, and we're gonna add color to all of these in kind of a fun rainbow order. Just like we did with the leaves, we're gonna have the darker color towards the bottom and then the lighter color towards the top. And then here's a chance where I did use two markers, but I kind of wanted a little bit more of that darker pink, so I brought in the darker pink, and now I'm just gonna blend that out just a little bit. Once again, just like the leaves on these flowers, you can really just kind of be messy and scribbly, and that's what's gonna make them look so special. So you can see I just kind of scribbled right on them and then brought in my medium and then my light right up towards the top, and I just think they are looking so gorgeous. And then now we can add our flowers into the backdrop. So just like we did before, I'll add a little drop of glue to the base of the flower and then layer those frames right on top. So we just have those little flower bases we're gonna layer right on top of the flowers. And you can see as we add these flowers how this whole flower garden is just coming to life. It is just so beautiful. So here we can add our next little purple flower and we're kind of going through our fun rainbow here and then we'll bring kind of the more bluish purple there towards the end and I just think this is looking so beautiful. So we've got our oranges, pinks, yellows and a little bit of a blue. I think the little individual flowers in the flower garden backdrop are just so gorgeous. I can't help but use them every time. So I went ahead and die cut the stems and the flowers for that. And we're gonna add some color just like we did with the other ones, having some of that beautiful turquoise. And then we can layer some of the flowers that we already cut and colored onto these cute little stems. And oh my goodness, aren't they so cute? These are so pretty. I can't wait to use them on a card on their own, but I am gonna add them into my flower garden in just a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take out the largest of the stitched rectangle frames, and I'm just gonna die cut it in white cardstock. I wasn't careful enough with my uh, coloring there, and so I needed to layer over it to give it a nice clean edge. But if you were more careful with your coloring, you wouldn't need to layer it over because you would still have that nice white frame. But in this case, I'm just gonna take one more frame there and layer it over top, and you'll see that it's gonna give it that nice finished look that just looks so beautiful. Now we need a background for this gorgeous frame. So of course, once again, I'm gonna take out my rainbow ever after paper and I'm just gonna put the frame over top of the paper, just trying to see what's gonna look nice. I'm just gonna kind of turn the paper, see, and then I'll trim down that perfect piece. And I think that little green to yellow gradient is just gorgeous. Then here I have a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. And so I'm gonna layer my beautiful gradient piece right on top. And then I can work on layering my frame. And for this frame, I'm just gonna add it on with some liquid glue so that it's nice and flat against the frame, which is really pretty. And so I'm just gonna add the liquid glue around the edges of the frame so that I can kind of tuck some things under these flowers if I want to later. You can see, isn't this so beautiful? I love this backdrop as a landscape backdrop, and I think it's so fun to kind of trim away some of the leaves to get a different look from it. 
So now we're gonna bring back those little extra flowers and we're gonna add them into our garden. So I'm gonna tuck this little flower there and you can see that it was a bit too long. So again, I'm just gonna take my scissors there and just trim off any of the excess and then I can just tuck that into my flower garden. And then for the other flower, once again, I'm just gonna trim off some of the excess. We can add some tape runner to the back of that, and then we'll layer this little flower into our garden as well. And I think this just looks so pretty. Oh my goodness, it's so great. It's gonna kind of fill in that upper right-hand side of the frame because we're gonna be adding the amazing build a greenhouse to this. So I've gone ahead and die cut all of these little greeneries and pots and things that you can fill the greenhouse with from some white cardstock. And now we're gonna be adding Color with our markers to these as well so that it coordinates with the whole backdrop that we just created. I'm going to be using a lot of the same colors like bringing in that turquoisey color or the yellows that we've used before so that there's some nice mixing and matching but then I will be bringing in some olivey greens for some of the plants and then of course some cute terracotta pots too. And you can see that I'm doing this in that same scribbly style. I'm just kind of adding the dark marker to one edge and then going medium to light. And I'm just bringing in the dark marker a little bit just to give it a little bit more definition on one side. And you can be really scribbly with these again because that's what's gonna give it that watercolor look and the look of a real plant or a real terracotta pot too. And now we can start layering everything together. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the top of those little flower stems and I can just layer my cute little tulips on top. And then I'll add a little bit of liquid glue to the tips of all of those flowers and then I can layer them into the pots. And it really feels like you're playing almost like with a little dollhouse of flowers. It's just so much fun to do, I can't tell you. It makes me smile every time. I'm gonna add some liquid glue to these stems and I'm gonna layer them into one of the bigger pots. And then I'm gonna work on these little hanging pots here. And so we're gonna layer the little pot kind of underneath the rope. And then we can layer the little hanging plants in that. And these are just so gorgeous. I mean, they're just so beautiful. I wish I had plants like this in my house. They're just so gorgeous. I love them so much. I know I keep saying that, but it really does just make me smile. Now I'm gonna take my white gel pen and just add some little white belt gel pen details to all of these little flowers. And those cute little butterflies are actually from the flower garden backdrop too. So I went ahead and added these little white gel pen details. And then I realized I should probably add some white gel pen details to the flower garden backdrop too, so that everything coordinates really nicely. So I'm gonna add some little curved lines around the leaves and little dots just to give it some beautiful definition and really make those flowers pop. And then here you can see how this is looking. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I can't wait to make a million of these backdrops. It's just so much fun. And now that we've colored and done all of our greenery, we need a greenhouse for this card. So we're gonna die cut the greenhouse out of some silver metallic cardstock, and then that cute little bench out of some wood grain cardstock. And I love the greenhouse cut out of the silver metallic. I think it looks so cool. And so now we're gonna start layering in some of the plants that we colored earlier. So I'm gonna use my glue tube to add some liquid glue to the top of the string of the hanging plants. And then I'm just gonna lay the greenhouse right on top so that it picks up that glue and puts those little hanging pots in perfect placement. And you can see how cool they look hanging in the greenhouse. I put some white cardstock behind so that you could really see it there. I'm gonna add some liquid glue onto these plants. And then once again, just kind of layer the greenhouse right on top and help them fill in that cute scene. And I can just trim off any excess of that hanging plant there. And then I'm trying to kind of see how that's gonna look in the backdrop, and I think it's looking really cool. So now we can add some liquid glue behind it and then just press that down into the scene. And isn't that so beautiful? I just love the little hanging plants and everything behind it. One of the things I love to do with this greenhouse is to layer things behind like we already have and then to layer things in front too because I feel, really feel like it gives that look of the greenhouse where things are inside but there's also some stuff on the outside too. And so we're gonna layer the little bench on the outside and then here's where we're gonna layer our potted plants here. So we're gonna add our cute little tulips here to the side, we'll add two of those there. And I really like that pop of the yellow down there. I feel like it really looks nice with the yellow flower that's right above the greenhouse. And then we can add one more little terracotta, terracotta pot there. I had an extra one, I'll just save for another card. And then I'm just gonna add some white gel pen details to the bench because I realized I had added it to everything else except the bench. And so we're just gonna add some cute little lines and dots there to help it kind of blend in with everything else we've created. For the cute little butterflies, I'm gonna kind of bend them in half, just like that, and then add a little liquid glue right down the back of the body of the butterfly. And then I'm gonna layer that into the scene. I'm just using a pair of scissors to hold it in place, and it's looking really, really great. 
Now here is some textured cardstock. And what I love about our textured cardstock is it has texture on the front and it has a smooth on the back. I love the texture, but I was about to heat emboss and I like to heat emboss on a smoother cardstock. So all I had to do was just use the back of the textured cardstock to do that. And for a sentiment, we're going to be taking this gorgeous garden before and afters, which has really, really beautiful sentiments in it. And so this one is hope your day blooms with happiness, which I think is so gorgeous for this scene. So we set up the stamp on the block and then we're just going to go ahead and ink it up on our clear embossing ink, which is a nice sticky ink. We're going to stamp that onto that stitched banner that comes from our heart garland backdrop. I love this stitch banner. It's just so gorgeous. And then we're going to sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder top off any of the excess and then we can go ahead and heat it up with the heat tool and we'll have this nice bright white shiny sentiment onto that stitched banner. Now that our stitch banner is all done and you can see our mess of embossing powder to the side, we're gonna clean that up. And now we can add our cute little banner on here. So I'm gonna add some tape runner onto this banner and I'm gonna be tucking it under the flowers and also under the greenhouse. So I'm just gonna trim off the edge there so that the edge kind of goes right into the frame. And then we're gonna layer the banner underneath the flowers and then also underneath the greenhouse. And that's gonna help kind of ground this banner into our whole scene. You can see I'm just kind of moving the flowers and the leaves around so that they don't cover up our banner too much. And you can see how pretty that is. And now we're gonna go ahead and add one more little butterfly into the scene that's gonna be flying up towards the sentiment. And once again, I'm just adding a little bit to the back of the body so that those cute little butterfly wings are kind of flapped up in the air. And I think this is such a pretty look. And now the card is all done. I love using this backdrop in a landscape position and trimming off some of the flowers to create the perfect place for the greenhouse and adding color to it with markers was so much fun and so relaxing and I think it looks just stunning and next up Shari is gonna wow you with her undersea idea with this oh my goodness so take it away Shari so today I'm using the flower garden backdrop to make an ocean theme card and I started by cutting this backdrop from some algae card stock and I'm actually going to be turning it upside down and then I also cut some of those little solid leaves that we can layer behind out of some lime green glitter card stock. I've cut the blooms both sizes from apricot and then these two little extra greenery pieces from cilantro card stock. So this is that lime green sparkle cardstock that I cut those solid pieces out of and I thought it would be really pretty to layer these behind the openings and you get that little hint of glimmer, almost like sparkly things underwater. I just love how that looks so I'm excited to layer this behind all of these leaves. So I flipped my die cut over and I'm just adding two dots to each little leaf kind of at the top and the bottom where those points are going to be and then I'm just dropping my glitter leaves into place. You do want to use liquid glue for this since we are gluing to that rough glittery side of the cardstock. And once I have all of these in place, I'll flip it over and we will see that beautiful glitter cardstock. I just think it is so pretty. Now I'm going to frame this with a stitched rectangular frame that is cut from some rainforest cardstock, which is that really dark bluish green. And I think that this frames up this ocean seam very nicely. Now for the background, I am going to use the Birthday Candles Watercolor Wishes paper. I like that teal color and I like that it has that watercolor look like the ocean. So I will just cut this down to four and a quarter by five and a half to fit behind my backdrop. And then I also have a piece of craft cardstock also cut to four and a quarter wide. And then I am going to use one of the stitched hillside borders to cut the top of it for the sand for my little mermaid to sit on. So I'm just making sure this is about where I want it to be. I do want it to be nice and high because I will be putting a sentiment at the bottom. I want to darken this up a little bit more though and give it that kind of deep oceany look. So I'm using some tea dye distress ink and some vintage photo distress ink. So the tea dye I put along the top and the Vintage photo is more along the bottom and I'm just checking with my backdrop to make sure I have pulled my ink up far enough to where we see that nice dark part at the bottom. Now for the little flowers that you layer behind this backdrop, I cut those from apricot cardstock and I wanted to give them a little bit more color. So I'm using some guava ink 
and a little blending brush. And I'm just adding a little bit of that pink color to the base of each of these. And this really gives them some dimension and brings them to life a bit more, I think. See how pretty that is? I will do the same to all of the little ones. I did not use all of these, but the die cuts three each time you run it through. So I just went ahead and added that inking to all of the little flowers. I can always keep these for another project later, the ones that I don't use. I wanted to create a birthday card, so I pulled out the mini set Seahorse and Around, and there is a sentiment in there that says, I see it's your birthday. Now I'm going to do some selective inking for this so that I can stack my sentiment. So I lined up the part that just says your birthday, then I've masked off the beginning, inked it up, and removed that post-it note so only your birthday is inked up. Then I will do the same as I reposition it above. So now this time I will cover up the your birthday with that post-it note and only ink up the words I see it's. Then I can remove that post-it note and stamp that down and I have this stacked sentiment. I wanted to add a little more texture to make this look like sand and the easiest way to do this if you don't want to get out your paint and splatter is to just add some little dots of marker. Now I'm adding my watercolor wishes paper to my card base as well as my sand that I created with my sentiment. And then for the frame, I wanted it to have some dimension off the background. So I'm adding some thin foam strips around all four sides of the frame so that it can be popped up. I think this adds some really fun dimension and you get the look that I was going for, which is kind of, the point of view of kind of being in a sea grotto and looking out towards the mermaid. Now I'm trying a little trick that I have seen Jessica do in her videos and she pulls off part of the liner paper instead of doing the whole strip and then she lines it up and tacks it down and then pulls out the rest of that strip and I think that that was a really easy way to add this foam pop up frame. Now I did forget to add my flowers, but that's okay. I can add my little foam squares to the flowers, which is actually perfect because it will kind of hold up those little stems that are sticking out there. And then I'm adding a little dot of glue just to the base and I can slide those right up under there and attach them to each of those little stems. I like the look of these flowers kind of framing up and looking down at the scene that's going to be in the center. So this is just a really fun look to flip that backdrop upside down and get something a little different. So I have added four of the large blooms and now I will add three of the smaller blooms to those little smaller stems. And I'm doing the exact same process. I've put a foam square on the back of each one, and then I'm just adding a little dot where that flower will touch the stem. Then I also have those two stems that I cut separately, and I want to go ahead and add some of those blooms to those stems as well. And these are just going to be some underwater greenery that is next to my mermaid. So I want to stack these together and kind of put them over here beside my mermaid to fill that space a little bit. And actually, I'm just going to pick them up with my tweezers and hold them right together in that arrangement that I liked. Add some glue and then stick them right back down where I had them. Now for my mermaid and my little seahorse, I am adding some foam squares so that they are popped up as well. So I'm adding my rock first and then I can add my other elements. So I'll add this little seahorse over here floating in front of those flowers and then my mermaid. And I'm just kind of figuring out where I want her to be. She does kind of cover up that little flower a bit but you can still see it peeking out from behind her head. And then I will just sit her there on that rock. I pulled out some of the little bubble stamps in the Mermaid For You stamp set and I'm going to stamp some little bubbles in that empty space above her head. 
and I'm using some mermaid ink to do this and then I've pulled out my stickles and to make the flowers match those glittery leaves I'm just adding a little bit of glitter detail to the base of each of the blooms. I will also add some glitter details to my mermaid's tail, hair, and the seahorse as well because I feel like everything underwater is sparkly. And then here is my finished card with that flower garden backdrop used to make an underwater ocean scene. And I just think that glitter layered behind the leaves is so beautiful. Oh my goodness, Shari, I am in love. I love this backdrop upside down. I love it for an ocean scene and all the sparkle that you added behind the leaves is stunning. And next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. And this one here by Elena is so beautiful. I love how she added those little daisies in and the fox. Oh my gosh, I just love it. Here, Elise shows us that this flower garden backdrop is a great way to frame up a sentiment. She used the Henry's Build a Sentiment set and I just love this look. I love how Grace flipped the backdrop upside down to create the cutest little scene for her garden snail. Oh my goodness, this just makes me smile. And then here Mindy shows us that by cutting out out of black, you can create a really cool silhouette for a nighttime scene. And I love the awesome mushrooms in this. Grace created the most gorgeous wedding card with the build a castle die set. And I love how she didn't add the flowers to the flower garden backdrop and it has such a cool look that way. This wedding card by Jen is so beautiful. She used the new Rainbow Ever After paper in the background in the Happy Couple set, and I think it's just stunning. Elise shows us again how amazing it is to use this backdrop to frame up a sentiment. I love this look so much, and it's so pretty out of all of the layered pattern papers. Maureen took this backdrop under the sea with the cutest little octopus in the inside. Oh my goodness, with the I love you this much, it is just so sweet. I love Audrey's soft colors and bold flowers with the giant die cut sentiment in the middle. I just think this is so beautiful. And then here is another look at how to take this backdrop and bring it in to a nighttime scene. I love the black frame around it and the beautiful night sky inking in the background. And then here is the card by Grace that inspired us to make ours today. It is just so beautiful. I love how she used it as a landscape design. And here's the card by Tammy that inspired us to make the other card. And I love her gorgeous inking and how she has the cutest kangarific scene inside. And then here, I love this card by Leticia. I love how she added the scallop frame around it. I can't wait to try it. And this is so great for a gorgeous die cut sentiment. Or you can do a cute happy couples card. I love this framing, this fun design. It's just so amazing. And oh my goodness, we cannot wait to see your flower garden backdrop cards. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.